It's one of my favourite meetings of the year this weekend because, as you would be aware, I do love a country cup. And Scone in particular adds that additional industry presence to the day, being the breeding hub of Australia. This year we have Mr Dependable in the Scone Cup. He has always been a consistent horse, but this preparation he seems to have gone from strength to strength. He's dropping back in trip, which doesn't tend to be your preferred path. But with the mile lead up getting cancelled, it seemed you had no other choice. Yeah, look, I actually don't mind the way the program worked out for him. I thought a uh, 1800 metre test around the Kensington tracks, so I, I guess sort of not a not a stiff test for them either. Um, but I don't mind having that grounding for them with the three weeks sort of leading that he's had to, to the mile here at Scone, which is you know, quite a strongly run mile there at the big track as well. So he probably needed that extra bit of fitness only being, you know, I think it was only third up there, so fourth up into this particular race, he's got a, a really good grounding and had a bit of time to, to get over that run and uh, I don't think that's made him too dour by any means from, from what we've seen in his work and he's had a nice lead up, so yeah, it's a meeting we love and we'd love to pick up a, a Scone Cup and I think we've got a great presence over the, you know, the two day carnival which is now one day at, in Sydney, uh, but still the Scone Carnival, uh, yeah, looking forward to some of the chances going there, Mr Pendable leading the charge for us. One particularly interesting filly is our warnable champion, Butter Blonde. We won't ever see her over the sticks, but she did win a two-year-old race over the carnival in very impressive style. While this filly is in form, it seems like a good time to try her in stakes grade once again, as it will do wonders for her future value. How did she come through her win last week? Yeah, excellent. I think she just needed that little bit of confidence again. Um, Great to see you go about things the right way. Uh, she can do a few th things wrong in her, in, in her work and her races, um, particularly their sort of first up. But uh, last start, she showed good speed. She was sort of nice and settled through the mid stages, and then she she quickened when when needed to. So um, I think she'll take a lot of benefit from that. Uh, the trip away sort of really helped her, and now just sort of targeting a nice race for her down in Adelaide. It's important that she can get a try and get a stakes win for breeding. You know, value going forward, and particularly being owned by Rosemont Stud. So um, she's already got some great placings as, as a two-year-old in the in the in, in the spring carnival so it'd be nice to get a win for her now. Cuban Joe or Joey as he's fondly referred to returns to the races on Saturday at Kembla. You've been patient with him and it was repaid on debut with a really eye-catching win. He was far from disgraced second up so has he taken the improvement required to be tough to beat here? Yeah definitely I think just last start he was giving away a little bit of race experience and not always easy taking that that quick step and that first step from, from Maiden to sort of class one grade or into the benchmark system. So I think he's got that little bit more exposure now. He's he's, he's tough enough for that. He's fitter for that. Um, so expect him to improve off that and, and definitely getting out that little bit further in trip I think thinks ideal for him. So uh, he's been training well and I think he's ready to try and get back in the winter stall for us this time around. Greek Star, a son of Zoo Star, is owned and bred by Musk Creek Farm. He makes his debut at the same meeting. He's had a number of trials and looks primed to put his best foot forward here. Tell us a little about him. Uh, yeah, look, seems a, a very genuine horse, you know, you see in, in the trials there, he's uh, just looks looks like he's trying hard and, um, you know, given, given his all and he's replicated that in his track work and so going there nice and fit and forward for, for his first up run so he's got the good tactical speed he'll, he'll put himself on pace and as I said he, he'll be he'll be trying hard a long way from home and will give him something to catch so he's uh, you know just giving away a little bit of race experience um, but I, I think he's done enough at home to, to be effective for his first up. Wynette is a filly by American Pharaoh out of a mare gay trained. You purchased her from last year's Magic Million sale and she seems to be going from strength to strength. How has she been training in the lead up to her debut? Uh, excellent. Uh, she's was, she was very eye catching in her in, in last gallop. She's she nice and sharp. So, looking forward to her making her debut here. Um, I thought her two trials have been, been excellent. Um, her latest one, she and she just got back in the field there at Rose Hill and sort of given a, a, a quieter trial. But I like the way once she was able to balance up, she, she worked home really strongly. So, uh, I think she's had you know well grounded. Uh, you know, exposure in, in, in both her trials. She was particularly sharp in her first up one, so I think the 1,000 metres there will, will suit her really well, and as they're going off her last work, she'll be, uh, you know, she, she'll be very effective for us on Saturday. The Saturday City meeting has been moved from Scone to Rose Hill, and you have four horses contesting stakes races. Let's start with Embracer, one of the viewers' favourites after the tip you gave us a few weeks ago. How has he come through his dominant first up win? Uh, excellent horse is thriving at present. Um, you know, lucky, I, I was even sort of quite surprised how how well he, he won on debut. Um, you know, it was quite a sort of soft victory there in the end, so it was great, pleasing to see. Uh, certainly looks to have trained on with that. Um, this race looks a little bit tougher on, on, on paper, a little bit more depth to it, so no doubt he's going to find this a bit tougher, but uh, I must say if he, he can reproduce that first up performance, well, uh, he's certainly going to be hard to, hard to hold out once again. 
Capitalist filly Shahonka heads to the Woodland Stakes in her second career start and her debut was extremely eye-catching. Do you think she has what it takes to go one better and win here? Yeah, most certainly. Uh, I think she's a really nice filly for us going forward. Um, looks a, a nice race um, for her, even though she's still a, still a maiden, uh, just contesting a stakes race. I, I think, you know, obviously a few of them in, in, in similar positions, but her first up run was was excellent. Um, as you said, very, very, very eye-catching. and I, I, I like her. I think there's a lot of, lot of depth, a lot of quality to her, and, uh, you know, hopefully we can see that on Saturday, but certainly one to follow going forward. I, I think she's one that we're going to see a lot more from in, in, in the spring. Once she matures, she looks like she's got that scope to continue to improve but looking forward to seeing what she can produce off the back of that strong first up performance. Dubai Star has travelled up from Melbourne having had no luck in running last time in Saturday City Company. She steps up to stakes grade here, but with the brood mare sale looming, you've got to roll the dice with a filly like this. Yeah, look, she, she looks fantastic. She's come up in, in such great great order, which is a real credit to the, to the Melbourne team. Um, she looks to be thriving in her work, so hopefully she can go to a new career peak here, which no doubt she'll need to. There's a couple of handy types in there, um, but look, I, I don't think she's completely outclassed here by any means. Uh, her, her run last start was full of merit. She was sort of caught wide and, and travelling back, and uh, the way that she kept kept sticking on uh, and finally in line I thought she was so courageous uh, so it may not look as you know that the, the the result in the form may not read um, you know as well as it should as, as an enormous run so um, as I said she travelled up here in good order I think she's ready to run a big race. La Forêt was another of your horses to follow and I must admit I have a bit of a soft spot for her. She's a real tough filly and she seems to take that to her races which is a joy to watch. Yeah look she, she really is, um, you know, she's just such a professional filly, the types of filly love training, she's got that real good tactical speed, she, she puts herself on pace, uh, you know, good high cruising speed and she's been able to quicken off that, she's yeah, incredibly tough as you said, she, she tries her heart out and she's uh, ready to roll first up, we've given her three nice trials going into this, uh, so she's nice and forward for a first up run and Although we're testing at stakes level and sort of throwing it there in the deep end, certainly got a high opinion of her going forward. So I don't think she's going to be outclassed on Saturday. I think she'll run very well for us. We've had a number of yearlings through the stables now, many of whom are on their second preps and doing three-quarter pace. So I want to begin to pick your brain each week. Firstly, can you take us through a day in the life of a yearling at Tullock Lodge? Yeah, look, as you said, a few of them just having their first, second preparations and Look, it's all about the exposure at the moment, uh, just giving the exposure to the different facilities here, the different training tracks that we've got, um, you know, the, the pool, the barriers, you know, all the different types of education that they're going to need uh, for their training preparations going forward when, you know, when the, when the pressure's a bit more on. Um, obviously, it's teaching them to, to work around in, in pairs, in company, uh, and importantly, teaching them to, to gallop at present, you know, just establishing those foundations and conditioning them, strengthening them for what's going to lie ahead in the next couple of preparations. And, and with that, we're starting to see, see a bit more from them and um, you know see what they're so what they're made of and, and, and potentially sort of starting to profile them going forward so um, yeah there's a, a fair bit starting to happen and they're all starting to take shape so exciting exciting time of year to sort them out and I want to end today with your yearling of the week which I know is deep field pearl congenial with La Forêt being by the same sire she might just make this cult look very inexpensive by the weekend yeah look we we like the progeny of, of, of Deep Field that uh, had a lot of success with his sire through, through, through Northern Media. Found it just a very, uh, very genuine line of horses and, um, you know, he stamps his stock and this particular colt looks a nice, strong, uh, tough individual that they look precocious and, and got the scope to train on. You know, just like La Frey that we were able to identify early on and uh, she's certainly been able to prove prove that she was a great value purchase and you know I think the, the market's seen that as well with you know Deepfield's fee I think being doubled this year so he's certainly you know achieving the results on the track and I think we're going to see a lot more from him uh, this particular cold he, he was a nice sharp looking type at the yearling sales uh, he's on his second campaign here and as you said he's doing a bit of three-quarter pace work at present uh, he's just given a, a nice feel the way he's going about things he's got a great attitude to it but I just like the way that he's taking shape with the work and coping with the workload at present so He's conditioning really well uh, and certainly a horse that I think we can see early in the spring for us.